Good evening and welcome to Seaside Chats with the Salve Admit Guy. I am the Salve Admit Guy, Jim Fowler, Vice President for Enrollment Management at Salve Regina University in amazing Newport, Rhode Island, coming to you virtually from the back porch of Ochre Court, our iconic administration building uh, just on the cliffs overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, we have a wonderful program this evening for folks interested in art and studio art. Uh, which is a real strength of the curriculum at Salve. Uh, and with that, I'm going to introduce uh, Jerry Perino, who is the uh, department program chair for uh, studio art and uh, is here to speak with us this evening. How are you, Jerry? I'm great. Great. I, I'm not no longer department chair. Uh, that burden has been passed along to Dr. Anthony Mangieri. However, ah. However, in matters of studio art, he would usually consult with me. So, yeah. um, always good to shed those administrative responsibilities. I've been trying to do that for years. It just never quite happens. Well, my, 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 it's amazing. I used to be getting <laughs> so. Uh, well, terrific. So happy that you are here uh, to speak with our students, our prospective students. Uh, and uh, for those that have logged into one of these programs for the first time, uh, we'll just have a very informal discussion. Uh, if you have questions along the way, please feel free to use the chat box. And for folks that are logging into the recorded version of this after the fact, uh, by all means, we hope that you learn a lot about Salve's programs through these. Uh, you can find all of the recordings for these programs online. Uh, so if you have additional questions, uh, you can certainly contact your admissions officer. But to start with, uh, Jerry, uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your background and, and how you came to Salve and uh, what your specialization is within the art department? Well, um, I asking. Bouncing around between various programs, I taught in some very good programs. I taught at Wesleyan University at one point. I was the John Fraser visiting artist there, uh, which was a permanent position if I had wanted it. But this job opened up at the time, and I said sayonara. Um, and I also taught at the Rhode Island School of Design in a number of different capacities. Uh, that was a great job as well. Um, I taught at Rhode Island College also, University of Lowell, uh, University of Massachusetts at Lowell. Uh, probably missing a couple, but it's been a long time. I've been at Salve Regina for now my 22nd year, and I've been chairman twice. Uh, I teach drawing and painting, all manners of drawing and painting in the department. Um, I, I, as my colleagues are, we're all actively engaged professionally. We all produce art and exhibit art. Uh, our graphic designer is, is engaged professionally in doing commercial art. Um, my, uh, my work, uh, is representational, which means it's realistic and it revolves around issues of the human condition. Uh, philosophy, history, and politics are all uh, areas that have informed my work. I am my, personally a product of a liberal arts education, and I would say that the experience has made my artistic output much richer than it otherwise might have been had I, say, been in a BFA program. Um, I'm represented by a highly respected gallery in Boston called Hall Space. You can check out some of samples of my work at www.hallspace.org. Um, I've had a number of group and solo shows there over the years, over the past 20 years. Um, I guess that's it. I'm in my studio and I can freeze my camera around slowly. You can see some work. There's a piece on the easel here that's in progress. Uh, there are some other pieces in various states of completion. Um, I, I, paint, I paint toys a lot. Um, I use them as metaphors. Uh, I have an awful lot of fun in my personal private practice. Uh, I am always amazed when I sell work. I sell work, uh, I think, because they're toys, because the subject matter can be a little bit harsh sometimes. But I soften it by using toys to tell the stories. Um, I would also add that my work is probably tied directly to the university's mission and that it is it does revolve around so issues of social justice a lot. That's well, and, and to that end, I, I imagine that you have no uh, shortage of topics of inspiration in today's world. No shortage, whatever. Um, it's like a comedy business. Um, you know, bad politics is good for business when you're a com comedian. And I guess when you're a painter of my ilk, yes. 
<laughs> so, Jerry, tell us a little bit about the art program at Salve. We have offered both studio art and art history as areas of study. And can you talk a little bit about what the differences are between the programs, how the programs yes. really inform each yes. other, and, and what curricula are unique to each? Well, I would add also uh, cultural historic preservation is under the umbrella of art. It's a separate department, but it is closely related. Um, they attend our meetings. Uh, they attend our faculty meetings. And um, I, right away, I can tell you that the head of the CHP program a couple of years ago and Dr. Mangieri, the head of the art history program here, worked hard to streamline those two programs for the benefit of our students so that now it's very easy to do a double major. 16 extra credits get you a double major in art history and CHP. Um, one gives you more of the art history side of things. The other one gives you something of the museology side of things, uh, along with architectural history. And uh, combine that together, you, you have then, then career opportunities in museology, museum studies, that type of thing. So uh, they work really, really hard to invigorate um, the art history program and the CHP program. But I would also say that um, there's an awful lot of collaboration going on between the studio area and the art history area as well. Uh, Dr. Mangieri has, uh, has been really uh, a vital cog in, uh, in shifting things around. I would say that our art history program is absolutely unique. I mean, I mean Salve's leading the way. We have a, um, uh, a team teaching scenario uh, that's been going on for about four years now where uh, Dr. Mangieri has been team teaching art history special topics classes with our gallery director, who's a curator, uh, Ernest Jolicare, who's also a fantastic painter, teaches in our painting program. Uh, and the two of them have been te teaching these courses that revolve around projects. The first one with a student's curator to show in the, in the gallery um, called Curiously Coll Collected. It was uh, taken from a number of collections, local uh, collectors and uh, the CHP department also was a part of that. The Redwood Athenaeum, Jim Baker, a local painter. Uh, there were a number of people involved, but the Shorshes were involved. In fact, there's a show now of, of their work in our gallery right now. It's the same situation. Team, uh, a team taught class where the students actually curate the show. This goes on their resume as co-curator. It's professional experience. This is documented, it's going on a digital uh, database, uh, digital humanities database to live there forever, um, to be looked at by scholars forever. And our students get their names on that as professionals. So it's got built in internships. We've, de we've developed a nature lab uh, the, where the students, they earned a, a grant, they wrote for a grant, they won a grant, they, uh, the students then helped curate the show, they have the, the exhibit, the collection, they won with grant. Um, they found a space uh, in the building. It, it's really quite an amazing thing. You know, I'm an artist that would use a nature lab. And when I taught at RISD, I have a fantastic nature lab. And I was always jealous of that. How can we get a nature lab at Salve? Well, it took the art historian to do it. He, it was his brilliant, it was his brilliant uh, stroke of genius that, that found a way to make this work. And then he got the students involved. And that is a living, um, internship for our students it never ends we just got three new pieces we bought three new pieces with departmental funds they go into that they have to be photographed to go online they have to be cataloged as a an art historian would catalog them um, and so and even even the setup students can be involved in the setup so it's again curation all those things go on a uh, student's resume and the, and the best part is we have this remarkable resource with all kinds of specimens, uh, specimens in jars, but mostly taxidermy specimens of, of skunks and armadillos and porcupines and turkeys. Uh, our students can actually sit there and draw them. I won't say from life because they're all dead, but in, in life they can, they can actually work from them or they can work from wonderful high res photographs that a student took and we've posted online for public use. So um, art history is a fantastically vibrant place at Salve Regina. Ernie and Anthony, I would add, have also presented twice at the College Art Association's annual meeting. That's a big deal. Um, and both times, the room was packed 
and it was packed with big art history programs who were very curious about what they're doing. Salve is actually leading the world at this. No one else does this. Salve Regina's art department does it. So art history is remarkably vibrant right now at Salve Regina. And, and I always say, I would say for years, the studio end was the, was the strength of the department. And I haven't even gotten to that yet. But uh, we have remarkably strong programs in uh, ceramics, graphic design, illustration, interactive media art, which is kind of electronic digital stuff, a lot of code writing nowadays, making art with code, uh, painting, traditional painting, and photography. So students can concentrate in any of those areas. Um, I would also say a real strength of our studio area is, is our devoted faculty, professionals, all professionals who are uh, letting their own work, my own work informs my teaching. And also um, the fact that students can easily double concentrate. We have, for instance, a, um, a senior, the all studio majors in, in the 2D areas outside of ceramics must take at least one 3D class as a part of their requirements for art. and fell in love with it. He never dreamed he would fall in love with it. This kid is a fantastically talented painter. He won an award at the Providence Art Club last year. Uh, I would say he won the award in the midst of, right in, right in RISD's backyard, in the midst of 13 or 14 RISD kids who also applied for that show. He won an award. And uh, he took the ceramic class because he had to. He fell in love with it. And this semester, we're tailoring his, his uh, senior year. He's taking an advanced painting class for the second time. Uh, we have an idea we got together this summer. He worked out his, his plan for painting, and then he needed to take a directed study. He needed, the, he needed three credits to be full time. So I said, well, we'll take a class where you can learn sgraffito, which is basically drawing on ceramic surface. And um, he's, he's, gone, he's gone off on that. He's just like, this is, this is it. And he gets to take ceramics again in the spring to finish up his, his ceramics concentration. This happens all the time at Salve Regina where students, are for, students take other areas of concentration and they fall in love. We've had kids triple concentrate, which is hard to do, but it, it's doable if you get in on the freshman year and, and you're on track and you're not doing any other majors or minors. But generally speaking, even kids with minors can oftentimes, in other areas, can oftentimes double concentrate. So uh, I think that's a real strength of our program. Yeah, I re really love, you know, one of my favorite things to do on campus when I have an opportunity is to pop over to the Antone building, which is where the uh, art departments and the CHP department are, are located, as well as our theater program uh, has their offices there and just walk the halls. Uh, and it's always amazing to see, you know, it's very often the students aren't actually in a studio. They're they're out in the halls and utilizing that space because uh, the 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 building itself is so create creative in its just nature uh, as being an old historic stables that was renovated. Um, one of my favorite things last year was walking through and seeing this great display of uh, anime that students were doing a terrific anime project focused on, in some cases, some of their famous anime that they were replicating and in others, creating their own characters and, and, and setting up for what might be ultimately an animation shoot. Uh, I think the diversity of what is offered through the program is really quite remarkable for a program of its size. We, 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 we let the, the students tell us what they want. I've got a kid came in, said, I really want to be here. I love liberal arts. I love your department, but I'm interested in interior design and you don't have it. I says, you're right. We don't, but interior design is what it is. It's just an extension of art. And, uh, and, and if you're willing to stay, we're willing to work with you. And, and I'm sure she'll be a great success to that. She's already doing an internship at animation was one of beef. We don't have animation. Well, yes. We've got a kid that's a professional. He's working out on the West Coast for the last 20 years. Uh, we've got people doing all kinds of things that we don't have. We don't have as a concentration. We have producers at NBC Universal. Um, we don't teach that here. We don't teach videography here per se. Uh, we do have a videographer who teaches in the English department. They've taken some classes there, but we try to figure out a, to to make it work. We have kids working in the fashion industry. We want to have fashion, but. We, we always take a, a promise I can make to anyone out there is that if you have a concrete idea of what you want to do, 
you want to be in a liberal arts curriculum where you want to you want to have a broader ba broader base of knowledge than you're going to get in a BFA program, um, and you want a, an art department that's going to teach you strong foundations, and and the faculty is going to be with you every step of the way. I promise you, we're the one for you. We we um, we are not we are never a number here, uh, and we start asking questions before we even meet you. We start asking questions. What are your dreams? You know, we, we what are you dreaming? So. And I think that's a great transition to my next question, which is really about the differences and similarities between the BA program and the BFA program. At Salve, we offer a Bachelor of Arts in Studio Art or Art History or Cultural Historic Preservation. Students that look at Salve's program tend to be looking both at Bachelor of Arts programs like ours, but also at Bachelor of Fine Arts programs. And I think sometimes there is some confusion of what is the difference and a misunderstanding of just in some ways how very similar they are, but that there are sort of advantages and disadvantages to both. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, a BA is not for everybody, but neither is a BFA. And uh, I think a lot of schools also have what I call sham BFAs. Um, where it's it's just it's just an alphabet soup that they made up and somehow they get away with it and it's on a piece of paper. But um, I know kids that have left us for after freshman year to go into a specific BFA program and they're back within a year because it was a sham. So you have to be careful about that. But the basic difference is a BFA is a professional program. Uh, for instance, when I taught at the School of Design, that's a professional program. I remember my first day teaching uh, I was teaching advanced painting in the illustration studies uh, department. And I got notice um, in those days, there was nothing but notes. The secretary sent a note to the office and I'm standing there in front of a sea, about 30 or so, 25 or so students in the classroom, all illustration majors. And the note said, uh, so-and-so's father passed away suddenly. She won't be into, in class for at least a week. At least sophomores, maybe juniors, right? Maybe some seniors. And I said, well, you know, any of you who know so and so or father passed away it might be nice if you sent her a, a little card saying, you know, with the condolences and um, it was, it could hear crickets chirping. And one kid raised his hand and said, you have to understand this department's so big and we go into a hole and get our work done for 12 hours a day and we don't see the light of day. I have no idea who you're talking about. And they all I kind of agreed. Uh, it's intense. At a school like the, the School of Design, it's a very intense situation, and that is for some people. But you're a number. You're not going to get a lot of a lot of personal instruction, and that's not who we are. However, uh, you're also not going to get a wide a wide breadth of information. Your information is all going to be not only just about art, but once you get out of foundations at a school like that, you're funneled into your major all the time. Again, some people find that exciting, and if that's what you're looking for, look for a BFA program. But with a BA, with a BFA, with a BA program rather, like we are, you're going to have a wide breadth of courses that are required. And I'll tell you what a difference that made for me personally. Uh, art is about ideas. In the end, art is about ideas. And if your ideas are only about art, you have a really narrow audience. Um, and it would, to me, it would be boring as heck if I had to make art about art only for artists. I make art for general consumption, and and uh, the the obligatory classes I had to take. Uh, in my in my undergraduate days uh, regarding politics and history and philosophy changed my life. I mean, I wasn't a great philosophy student. I won't tell you what grade I got in the class. It was not, let's just say it was that pretty average and leave it at that. I use stuff I learned in that class almost every day in my painting. I'm aware of things. And uh, because of that experience, Art is about ideas. So if you have other interests outside of art, you can pursue those in a very strong liberal arts curriculum. Um, but that's the major difference. And I, and I would say, again, uh, we're looking for students who are interested in not just art, uh, in learning, and, and, and especially those who have other, uh, other options, other ideas, other interests that they might want to pursue as a minor or even a double major. It, it, sometimes that's possible. Psychology is a good double major. It's only 39 credits. And if, if we get in on the ground level, we can figure out a way to make it work. Bing, 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 four years, you're done with two, two degrees. So.
So um, I, I guess I hope that answers your question, Jim. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it illustrates a lot of it, a, a point that I make often to students about that are co contemplating the BA versus the BFA that, you know, and, and this is really informed more by my own experience um you know but the people listening wouldn't necessarily know i often joke you know what do you think a vice president for enrollment management majored in on the undergraduate level uh and they're often very very um surprised to find out that my undergraduate major uh, i had a double major in english and theater english focus on literature i had a double concentration in theater in uh, acting directing and uh design um and i was able to do all of that because i was in a bachelor's program and i was able to have that really broad exposure to a lot of different things uh and was able to pursue a number of different focuses without being pigeonholed or limited to one specific area and it was a more academic experience. And so I, I think to your point about the BFA really being sort of this professional pathway that is extremely targeted, there is a place for that, but it but it limits you to some extent in terms of your future. Whereas having a bachelor's degree, at least in my case, allowed me more opportunities to go into a number of different directions. I, I still, pursue a lot of what I learned within my undergraduate program in theater every day. Heck, here I am uh, online with you doing this program and doing these programs regularly. I'm often in front of groups of people. I'm often using my design experience in, in developing websites or any of that. And I certainly see that with our alumni at Salve, who when, when they come back and they do the uh, alumni art show every year, I'm always amazed at the diversity of careers and the diversity of locations that they're working. Some in New York, some in Boston, some in LA, some overseas. Uh, and so, you know, can you talk a little bit about sort of what those career paths are for a student that comes from our program? Because I th I'm always just shocked and, and so proud when I see just how successful our alumni are. And in many ways, making very, very lucrative careers in an area that I think a lot of people have a misapprehension that if you're going to go major in art, that you're going to come out and you're going to be in poverty because your your artworks aren't going to sell until, frankly, you pass on when all of a sudden they have great value. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 yeah it's just, it is what it is, uh, it, but it's all misinformation. Uh, first of all, I, I want to say, getting back to what you said about, you know, theater, um, it's art and artists have to be resourceful. I, I take dirt and I smear it around on some flat surface and make it look like something it isn't, but it's dirt. Uh, sometimes you're in the middle of the night, you're drawing and your favorite pencil breaks. It's 12 o'clock, you can't order from Amazon, you can't come to the art store, you, you and it's gonna be done by five o'clock. Resourcefulness is a part of, of the any artist's bag. And you, you, same thing when you when you're an actor you 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 you're you're really making a lie. Shakespeare said it best, right? It's it, all the world's a stage. Um, and um, gee, I, I lost track of your question. How to get back to that? What was? Oh, could you refresh? I, I wanted to you could talk a little bit about sort of alumni and career paths from our program because uh, I I do think that our program prepares graduates extremely well to go in a wide variety of areas. That was my point, that was, yeah. is, is that we, we preach versatility. I wish I could say I invented it at South Regina. I showed up and things changed 21 years ago, but in all honesty, I'm a convert to this. They, the, the, the people, Jay Locketeur was here. He has, he's been retired now for two years. He was here from day one, really. But there were, there were other people involved and, and they figured out this way to make our small, liberal arts curriculum work for us instead of against us. We got into NASAD when NASAD accredited the National Association of Schools of Art and Design. Uh, we're on one of them, 37 schools of our type in the in the country that have that that uh, those credentials. And that's that's saying a lot. And one of the ways they figured out was versatility has to work versatility because um, we have a student that has an inter interest in psychology and they do a minor. Uh, well, that means that they have an opportunity, for instance, to do art therapy. Um, so we're always looking for ways to couple careers with 
with what a student what a student genuinely is at their core. And I think that's kind of unique or certainly makes us special, you know. Um, so versatility is remarkably important. We feel that. Uh, and when our students get out into the, the real world, I got a great story. I was going to tell it at the end. I'll tell it now, right? Kid named Andy Servo came, came to Salve. He's a good athlete. Um, he came to Salve because he could play Division three football and start. He was a good athlete, good football player on a very good team. Um, but he was a really smart kid, very studious, worked hard, took a um, communication media technologies major, which is basically the forerunner for our current um, interactive media art um, concentration in studio art. And uh, he had the opportunity. <laughs> he, he said, I'm going to go out to New York when I graduate. I'm not sure. I'll look for work. I'll figure out what I want to do. I could do website design. He was out there looking for living in Brooklyn look, with some friends looking for a job and someone he was having beer one night and someone said, hey, I heard they're looking for a cameraman. They're, they're doing some film shoot over some aircraft carrier and they're desperate. They're looking for somebody to hang out of a hang out of a helicopter in a harness with a camera attached to their shoulder. And he said, I'm not afraid of a harness. He said, and I've shot, I've shot. I've time with state of the art video camera, but it's a little camera this big. And that's, he shot a lot of video for us when he was with us. But he never had a film camera attached to him. He never saw one before. He went there, he hung out of that helicopter, he did a great job, and one job led to another. He's a really talented kid. He's a senior producer now at NBC Universal, um, along with another alumni who graduated about five years before he did. And that's the only degree he has, is the degree from Salve Regina in communication media technology. There's nothing in that degree that says he should be qualified to work in film or in editing or in producing but there he is. We have, I have dozens of stories like that. So I, I think it, I think it has to do with the fact that we really zero in on what you want as a student. We zero in on and what your needs are. We help you to identify who you are. That's a part of a liberal arts experience is that you're taking these courses and you discover things about yourself, interests that you have. How does that relate back to your art? These questions come up all the time. And I think that's why our students do so well. It's versatility. And I wish I could say I implemented it, but I inherited it. I was a convert <laughs> to it. I said, you people are nuts, but I was wrong. So. Well, the and I think that's a great example, uh, the, the student, that you, the, the alumnus you chose, because the, the folks that are listening probably don't even realize, like you've seen ads on TV that are created by this guy. Uh, if you've ever watched USA Networks or or any of the networks within the NBC Universal umbrella, uh, he's done full promotional programs for uh, entire television series that are award winning, uh, and he got his start at Salve. Um, one of the great things about Salve's art programs is our location. Newport is such a fabulous artistic mecca. Uh, we have some wonderful museums. We have amazing galleries in town. Uh, obviously, the history, the the beautiful architecture, you know, virtually behind me, uh, one example of it uh, that can help to inform the educational experience for students. Can you talk a little bit about how Newport is a part of the curricular experience for a student in our programs. Well, it's it just how can you not be inspired? Um, you're on, you're 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 100, 200 yards from the ocean, maybe maybe a half a mile stretched uh, to the limits of our campus. You're never more than a three minute walk from the from the ocean. Uh, it's really incredibly beautiful. Cliff Walk is our campus. Um, the, the landscaping, of course, the architecture, Gilded Age architecture. You, you're studying and sometimes living in, in buildings that were, were built by the equivalent of multi-billionaires uh, for their summer cottages, oddly. Six weeks of the year they lived here. Uh, it just, it's just incredible. Um, one of the professors sent, <laughs> uh, drawing professors, I, I, was, I was walking um, between a meeting and the, build, the art building and I see a lot of the, the freshmen that I know because I teach a freshman seminar class, so I know them well. And they're running around like squirrels, picking things up off the ground. And I said, aren't you supposed to be a drawing class? Well, yes, but they, they sent us out to find interesting things on the ground. Well, Salve Regina has a lot of interesting things on the ground. Uh, we've had classes beachcombing, just sculpture classes, beachcombing, and coming back with incredible things. 
Uh, I'd be surprised if some of them aren't here in my studio, to be honest, because I usually will wheedle it out of a student if I really like it. But um, it's just a wonderful place. Culturally, it has the Newport Art Museum. The Redwood Athenaeum has some incredible shows of art and artifacts. Um, our, our art history students and CHP students often intern at both of those places. Um, there are other opportunities in town for internships. It's a thriving place for artists. Um, you know, I mean, frankly, there is some schlocky art, like seagulls hovering over the, the edge of the water there, but you'll find really a lot of talented artists in, in new, living and in, in working in Newport. One of them, uh, Nick Benson, uh, is one of MacArthur Grant. He won a Genius Grant about 10 years ago. Uh, he owns the uh, Stevens shop, the, the John Stevens shop, which is one of, the, one of maybe the, if not one of the uh, longest continuously run family businesses. Now, it was bought by the Bensons about uh, 100 or 90 years ago, but it was owned by the same family for 220 years, and now by the Bensons. It's been continuously in business. They started got their start doing gravestones, carved signs, and that type of thing, uh, and, and they do all kinds of memorials. They've done the MLK Memorial. They've done the etc. The, 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 the eternal flame at, at the John F. Kennedy at, at Arlington Cemetery, the World War II Memorial, the FDR Memorial, and, and he's a lifelong friend of our graphic design uh, professor. They grew up together. He, every year, every, every semester, our graphics class does a field trip to the Stevens workshop and, and talks to this genius who gives them a lot of good advice. So we have working relationships in town that, uh, that are priceless. And um, they really help. They, they really help to support our uh, our programs. So, you've talked a little bit about uh, the offerings. You've talked a little bit about Newport in general. Um, you know, what is the, is there anything about our program that you think this is something that is you're, you're going to get a salve? You're not going to get any place else in the country. This is completely unique to us. The big schools want to know how are you doing that? How's that working? Uh, but in terms, we of lost you for a second, so you have to repeat yourself, Jerry. We lost yeah. you for a second, so you got to repeat yourself. Sure, sure. Uh, the art history thing, where where the big the big programs want to know what 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 are you doing? How is that working? We're doing that. We we are leading. No one else is doing what we're doing in that area, and it's really really dynamic. And in, in the studio areas, it's just a remarkably devoted faculty who, I'll tell you one thing that we do probably better than most is I, I constantly, we constantly reach out to recent graduates. We had two that, this happens, they their boyfriends out west. And, and most of our connections are here. We have some connections on the west coast, but not in the, not in the middle west and the, the southwest. So, they wound up coming back a couple of years later, of course, sans boyfriends, and um, they're out of it. They don't, they don't, they didn't make connections here on the East Coast where we have a lot of alumni. And I got to work right away, work, getting in, networking with alumni. And one had a great interview. She had two interviews. One was with a great company. Um, they do a lot of work with the Patriots. She's very excited. Um, and I, I haven't heard yet back, but this is what we do. We, we are yours for life. I, I mean, it's a commitment we, we make to you that it's not just four years and then bye, it's four years. The same girl, in fact, comes to mind that came back and had this big interview last week. The day of her graduation, she stood in the gallery. I walked into the gallery from the commencement ceremony. We have a little reception in the gallery and the, the, the student show is still up. They all have to take their work off the walls. It's very sad. And they take their work off the walls literally and walk out the door. She was standing in the middle of the gallery all by herself, crying like, like an eight-year-old who lost her mommy. And I went up and I said, what's wrong? And she said, it's the end. And I said, no, it's just the beginning. And that's a commitment that we make. I, I don't know of anyone else that, that makes that type of commitment. We. We really, your success is our success. So if 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 uh, you don't have a job, well, I'll help you find a job. I've had students that really didn't want jobs. I have. They get out of here and they just, I throw jobs at their feet and they just don't pick them up. I don't know what it is, but most of them get jobs because we, we help them. If they don't get them on their own, we help them to find them. And uh, I would also add, we have a remarkably tight knit family that includes our alumni who oftentimes 
um, unprovoked will reach back and say, hey, there's an opening here at L'Oreal. We have the art director at L'Oreal uh, USA in New York City was one of our students, in fact, started out in, gra in, st in photography, took graphics at the end, took a graphics one class, and I like this. She's the, she's the art director now at L'Oreal. The junior opening here. If you have anyone, anybody about to graduate, or or anyone that's in town that that has been working more than a couple of years, if they want, we have an opening here. So we have these people that reach back. They know the value of our education. They know our kids are well prepared to take the next step. They know they're resourceful. We have a saying in the department: artists solve problems, and they know that. So they 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 would rather hire our people because they know our kids know stuff and they can they can get the job done. You mentioned briefly the uh, the gallery, and I I, I was remiss for not, for not asking you about the gallery because I think that's also something that is really nice about our campus being in a resort community that. Our gallery is just this sort of hidden in the corner gallery. I know where I went to undergraduate school, they had an art gallery on campus and it was stuck like in the bowels of this building that and it never got any visitors because nobody knew where it was and certainly didn't have traffic. For us, our gallery is open to the public. People come in off the street all the time because they're in the community touring the mansions and sort of now it's, you know, it's part of the Newport experience. Can you talk a little bit about the, the gallery and what type of experiences students have through there? I had, a, I had a, a young woman come up last week on Wednesday who was interested in painting and I gave her the tour. She met some of my senior painters doing fantastic work. She was thrilled, took her down to the gallery. Ernie was just the gallery director. Ernest Jolliker was just putting the final touches on this, this big exhibit that, of which the students were actually a part. They helped to co-curate co it. What a fantastic exhibit it is. And um, the first thing out of, out of the young woman's mouth was, do students get to show in this gallery? And I said three times a year. The first show is always our boss, best of Salve students show. Um, so it's the previous year's best work from all the classes. Gets judged and it gets put in the show. Um, then the last two shows, we have the senior thesis show. Honors. Uh, we have an honors thesis program. Not everyone does it. Not everyone who wants to do it can do it. It's it's it, you have to pass muster. Um, it's a really fantastic show and some kids that could do it, they're capable of doing it, can't do it because they might have a double major or and they have to finish up in those in another area. So we usually have about maybe five, four to four to six people in that show. And then that's followed by the, the thesis, the senior show. Every everybody has to do that. It's a part of the capstone class. They take that class their last semester. They actually design the show. They design, they, they market the show. They do everything for the show with the guidance of the gallery director. They even hang the show themselves. They even install their own work. A lot of big installation products. One, one young woman actually filled uh, about, mm, I would say, uh, of her artwork. And then she had to paint over it when the show came down and she did not want to do that. <laughs> It was not easy. <laughs> she was crying. It was the same girl. She was crying again. Um, but it, it is it is a vital teaching tool. Uh, the gallery director is really um, sensitive to the notion that it needs to inform all of our disciplines so it rotates out. There's, there'll be photography shows. There'll be digital shows. There'll be painting shows, et cetera, et cetera. There'll be ceramic shows. Um, we have, for instance, a, uh, for instance, we have um, a number of students who work in the gallery as docents, they sit there and make sure no one touches the artwork, etc. They also can help to patch the walls and they get some experience that goes on a resume uh, that worked in the gallery. And they, they know when you're, when you're hired to work in the gallery, it was, it was Ernie's first job out of grad school, Yale, was he worked in a gallery in New York City, um, which, which in part helped to land him this job. So anyway, um, we also always hire a graphic student, one of the juniors, to work in the gallery uh, until they graduate. And then we look for another person. We look for a talented person. So their job basically is to do all the graphics for the gallery. This gets an awful lot of play in it. Go, everything you make is going to go in your portfolio as a professional piece. I don't know schools that do that. We, we, we really work our, really work hard to, to try to find opportunities for our students to have a leg up on their competition when they're out there looking for jobs.
So, um, well, we're running uh, a little short on time here, so I want to, uh, before we open to any questions that uh, our attendees have, uh, just give you an opportunity. Is there anyone else that comes to mind that you want to talk about in terms of stories or experiences or anecdotes that you think, you know, this is really illustrative of the Salve student experience? I'll talk about Tommy Slocum. Uh, Tommy is maybe the best tattoo artist in the United States of America. Uh, he's certainly one of the best painters I ever had a hand in producing over my 37 years of teaching. I met Tommy. He transferred in as a, a JUCO transfer. He was here for three years. Uh, he played football. He's captain of a very good football team. So he was an athlete, and, but he found that he, he just had this incredible stamina. He would work hard at his painting and drawing. Uh, Tommy was very serious, and he was considering application to grad school. Uh, we had a plan in place, and... Instead, he got married and started a family. Let's put it that way. He had no options uh, for grad school at that point. He knew he needed to make a living. So he bounced around at odd jobs. He was depressed. He wasn't getting his art done. I tried to encourage him. Again, we stay in contact. This is. Um, and he, he suggested that uh, he was hanging around with some friends and they were getting a tattoo and. The guy, the, somehow the guy who was given the tattoo said, oh, you're an artist. I said, yeah. He says, yeah, yeah, let me see some of your stuff. Well, the guy looked at his stuff and said, hey, you want to do this? You can do this. I'll teach you. So he apprenticed with the guy for a year, worked for the guy for a year. Tommy has innovated the tattoo industry. Nobody does things that Tommy does with white ink. He, basically, he's making fine art on people's bodies. He's won awards after award after award after award. He finally got out of his indentured servitude and get out of that collaborative and open his own collaborative where he has his own stable of people who work for him. Basically, he does his own tats. You can't get an appointment with Tommy. You have to wait three or four months to get a tattoo from Tommy. But he, you know, I told him at the time, he said, but I'm selling out. I'm a painter and now I'm making tattoos. I said, just be the best damn tattoo artist you can be, Tommy. That's enough. You, have, you don't have to answer to anybody but yourself. Uh, so again, it's that resourcefulness. Um, he, he really felt the need to make art, but he also needed to make a good living. He's got two children, um, and, and an elderly mother to support an elderly, elderly father until he passed away. A lot of responsibility. And, uh, he found a way to make it work and he's, he's making art and he's, he's really good at what he does. He also makes illustration. Oh, I can tell you this. This is something I was sworn to secrecy. Um, the. And uh, he was. We lost you again. Yeah, start over on this one. He uh, he he's a big Raiders fan. He was commissioned by the uh, Las Vegas Raiders to do murals for their new stadium. They've been done. They're up. He, I said. He said, "What do you think?" He was nervous. I said, "Tommy, they're going to pee their pants when they see it." So they asked him to do two more. I think he's, he's, he actually did the one of Al Davis. That was the last one he did. They must have been waiting. Who are we going to give this to? Because Al Davis is the Raiders. So, you know, he's making money and he's making good money. I, I guarantee you he got paid really well for that job. But he had to sign a, a disclosure contract. He couldn't tell anybody about it. it was a number, there were a number of artists that, 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 that there were murals all around the, the, the uh, foyer when you walk around the stadium. And uh, Tommy, Tommy's right there. He also painted, I got him a job painting um, Tim Robbins for a show he was in. Uh, they, they were gonna give it to the producer of the show, they were, the people that commissioned it. And Tim Robbins was standing there pretty drunk and he looked at the portrait and he said, this must be mine. He took it off the wall and took it home. <laughs> That's a pretty good anecdote, I guess. But in any case, uh, our kids go out into the real world with real skills and uh, resourcefulness they'll find their way and we're, we, will, we will stay by their side until they do that. I always tell them, no, no, I'm buying lunch. No, no, I'm buying lunch. This is when they come back to visit. You can buy me lunch when you, when you have a better job than me. That's when you can buy me lunch. And I have had students buy me lunch. <laughs> yeah, they're making more money than Jerry. Yep. So, uh, you know, there are jobs and, and we're all on that. We want, we want you to have a career in art. If you're interested in that, uh, you're interested in a great education, uh, a liberal arts education. You're interested, you have other interests outside of art that can fuel your art, feed your ideas. Come to Salve Regina, meet our students, and let them tell you what they think. I think if you go to schools, 
You're going to listen to professors. Well, they want you to be there, so they might tell you some lies. You're going to listen to Jim, people like Jim. They need you to be there. Talk to the students. I guarantee you our students will tell you nothing but fantastic things about the programs. I challenge you. Come and visit us. So we do have a few people uh, that are on with us tonight. Uh, Ashley, Kate, and Maria, if you have any questions, by all means, please uh, just put them in the chat box. Okay, here's one uh, question about um, what stands out most to you from students in their art portfolio? Uh, and what are some common mistakes people make when submitting their portfolios? What a great Who's that from? Uh, that is from Kate. You froze on me. Yeah, sorry, that's from Kate. Kate, Kate, that is a fantastic question. I, we, we require five to 10 pieces and some schools might require more, but I would always, unless the school specifies that you have to put X amount of this or X amount of that. For instance, some kids feel compelled, might do really great sculpture, but they might feel compelled to put pencil drawings in, some sort of drawings in because their art teacher tells them that. You could always call a department and ask them, what do you expect? From my perspective, we want to see your best work. We, we teach foundations drawing for a reason. Not everybody knows it. Some people excel at it from the day they show up. Some people learn it. So you just always put your best foot forward. Always put your best work in. If you want my opinion, you can send, you can send it to me email address perino g p e r r i n o g at salve.edu and i'll be glad to give you an honest opinion um as far as as far as salve is concerned always put your best foot forward and if you have some part something that you feel is weak or not as good as the other things leave it out leave it out unless the school asks for x y and z then put in your best always put your best foot forward another thing is make sure that the image is squared up nicely and lit as evenly as you possibly can. Yeah, I think that lighting question is always a big one. Um, we utilize uh, something called slide room uh, for students to submit their uh, portfolios to us. Uh, and like, every once in a while, we will get a submission where they're just not lit well enough. Uh, and so you, you definitely want to keep that in mind. Uh, we have a question from Maria. This is really more for me, uh, but uh, by extension for uh, you, Jerry, uh, we are uh, allowing in-person tours right now. Uh, the question is, are students able to tour campus? We do have in-person tours. They're very limited. Uh, they are filling up quickly. Uh, however, I did in the chat box put my email address. So uh, we certainly understand that for art students, there's some additional considerations when looking at programs. You're going to want to see the galleries, things of that nature. So if you run into a problem, if you're listening to this tonight, and you run into a problem and you can't get a uh, you can't get a tour contact me personally uh, and I will make sure that I get you in to see the art department to meet Jerry uh, to meet other members of the faculty because uh, we want you to have that opportunity absolutely uh, so last chance for any questions that you have. Jim, you, you should also talk about the uh, Merit Scholarship in Art. Oh, absolutely. Yes, thank you for reminding me about that. Uh, students that are uh, interested in, in applying to the art programs at Salve do have the opportunity to be considered for uh, a special scholarship that is in addition to whatever merit aid that you may receive from the university. Uh, students that wish to be considered for that do need to submit their application under the early action application deadline. The EA deadline is coming up on November 1st. Please understand that that is the application form deadline. That is not the all your materials deadline. So if you're feeling like you need another week or two to get your portfolio together, get that application submitted by November 1st. We will accept your portfolio later. We won't, we won't be looking at the portfolios till after the Christmas break, till after Christmas, really. So you have time to get the portfolios in, but the application has to be in. And do they have to, is, do they have to tell them to, to tell your office specifically that they want to apply for that? 
or is it just all over? No, nope, nope, it's automatic. We will, anyone in this uh, review, considering the studio, our, our history programs will be reviewed for, for those scholarships, so. Yeah, that's important. It's a four-year scholarship. So if you win it, um, that, that's, that comes off your tuition for four straight years, as long as you remain in the department. And you keep, a, I think, an, they think the grade cum average for that scholarship is a C. If I'm not mistaken, but for the, yes, for it the is. general merit scholarships, it's a B. So um, it's a really good deal. It might, it'll help, every little bit helps. And you'll be eligible. Why not take advantage of it? Well, Jerry, thank you so much for taking some time this evening. Uh, thank you to those that uh, logged in to listen to our conversation. Uh, if you want to hear more about Salve through these types of seaside chats, we're going to continue to be having them throughout the semester. So if you have interest in other academic programs, be sure to keep checking your email for what's coming up. We'll also have uh, some alumni chats. We'll have some uh current student chats and uh, there are still opportunities again to visit campus and there's our virtual open house coming up this Sunday uh, which hopefully you are going to log into to learn more about the university. Uh, we really want you to be able to experience uh, the uniqueness that is Salve Regina and our amazing educational experience on the cliffs overlooking the Atlantic Ocean in one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful campuses in the entire United States. So, Jerry, thank you again. Really appreciate it. And uh, to everyone attending tonight, uh, have a wonderful evening, have a wonderful week, and we hope to see you soon. I just want to say, if you have any of you questions, my email address is right there posted in the chat. So you can, if it, whether it's a Great. Thank you, Jerry. Wonderful. Thank you. Good evening, everyone.